Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the return of the State of the Nerd Union. We're coming back from a hiatus of a month off. It's our return episode, and highlighting this week, it is Star Trek week. Star Trek all week long on the website at nerdunion.us. We're highlighting it because Star Trek Con is this weekend, and if you aren't there, you're not a real nerd. We got some special guests to with us tonight. Join with me, as always, is Trevor, our political expert, and our giving me a sad face currently because he won't be at the Trek Con. Not sad face, that's annoyance. Tread Law. Trev Law, baby. And we've got two special guests with us tonight, making their State of the Nerd Union debuts. You might know her as the Orion Slave Girl, Joni Brosis, infamous Hi. cosplayer. Oh, you know. <laughs> we know. You're kind of a big deal. That one green girl at that one convention. You know, her half naked all the time. Whatever. <laughs> And Joni, if they don't know where to find you yet, where can they find you? Joni Bros is on Facebook. What is your Twitter handle again? Uh, it is. It used to be at the Orion Slave. I figured it'd be easier so you could find me on everything as Joni Bros is. It's J O A N I E B R O S A S on everything: Instagram, Twitter, you name it. Tumblr, I think. Yeah. Uh, and not <laughs> only is she an awesome cosplayer, but she is also probably the most fun person you can ever take to Disneyland. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Disneyland epicness. Uh, also joining with us tonight is a man named Dan. Dan the man. He's considered to be the second most non or second most famous non famous person at the Trek convention. <laughs> it was hard work getting that title, but through perseverance and striving I have reached number two. <laughs> uh, both of them I was lucky enough to meet at the Star Trek convention last year. Both wonderful people. Glad to have them here tonight. So tonight what we're talking about is, in celebration of Star Trek convention, we are going to talk about the top ten must-see best original series episodes. Yes. My favorite original series. I'm an original series person, so I'm excited to talk about this. I've been thinking about it all day. And just like our top ten must-see nerd films, we're not going to do a number one through ten. Number one does not outrank two. We're just going for a top ten. And you mm -hmm. can figure out yourself afterwards which ones are your top ten. Leave it in the comments. So, yeah. Joni or Dan, being our special guest tonight, throw out one that you consider to be in the absolute must-see top ten. Well, as always, I mean, this is everybody's. I'm not going to say my favorite yet. But this is everybody's favorite. It's my top two, um, City on the Edge of Forever. I think that's, that's touched everybody's heart. It's the first, what, cuss word on TV. <laughs> Is it really? It, yeah. Okay. Yep. It is. Get us the hell out of here. Huh. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. It's, I mean, and it's one of those endings where you're just silence. It doesn't even need, like, those ending credit songs. It's one of those silence, and you just ponder and cry. Now, for, for a refresher, for those that are not intimately familiar with TOS, that is the one where McCoy goes crazy and mm -hmm. goes back in time and ends up destroying history by saving a woman. Yeah, he jumps through a giant donut looking thing. Yeah. The right. Guardian. The Guardian, which we have at the Creation Entertainment Star Trek Enter or Star Trek convention. I got too excited. <laughs> but we do have the Guardian there. They set it up and a lot of people jump through it. It's really fun. Uh, I I am gonna completely agree with this one. It's it's always considered to be the best. Yeah. It's not my personal favorite, but it's in my top ten. Yeah. I mean, and it's it's if I think it might be the first Star Trek episode that ever dealt with time travel. Mm -hmm. No, uh, actually, the second episode of the series would be the Naked Time. At the very end, they discover time travel and they travel backwards two days. Oh yeah, oh, that's right. uh, that's at least with tricky. with different time periods. Uh, yeah, it's the first one that um, really dives into that topic, yeah. and you can really see it throughout the entire Star Trek franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, episodes even like uh, the big goodbye in next gen you can see little things like he's from argentina um it has so many little little nuances about going back in time uh that really affects the entire franchise and they uh, so many time travel episodes reference back to that episode which is amazing and mm -hmm. i absolutely have to agree with one thing here is that by proxy of kirk allowing this woman to die he single-handedly defeats the Nazis. So, I mean, that's just right there. That's winning material right there. 
Kirk beats the Nazis by letting one woman die. And it was the woman that he loved. And let's, that's probably the greatest thing about this episode. It's probably <laughs> yeah. the first time you see Kirk actually have feelings, real, true, endearing feelings and love for a woman. Yeah. Not just a uh, sensualized relationship. And yeah. you kind of, um, and I feel like this is one that you have to watch after getting to know Kirk and seeing how yeah. much kind of he gets laid, he goes on, he gets laid, he goes on. You know, ladies, it ain't no thing, you know? But watching this episode, you see his, like, kind of his true self where, you know, only, like a self that you would only see with that his best friends see and his family see, you know? It's, it's a cool episode. This woman was special, but he had to let her die. Yeah, I guess no. we should say spoilers, but this show came out in the '60s, so screw it. Yeah, <laughs> Star Trek podcast about, and we're talking about an episode from 1960, and you haven't seen it. What What are you doing with your life? I what don't have, know. What have you done? Get out there and watch them. Yeah. Seriously, it's considered the best. It's sitting on the edge of forever. It's wonderful. It's It's amazing. Well, Dang. Uh, one other thing about this episode too. It's one of the first episodes that you see the emotional effect effect between the triumvirate of Bone, Spock, and Kirk, where you see how much one's emotions affects the others. Uh, they, you can tell that they are both sad for their friend Kirk, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's one of the first episodes that really dives into their connection as their, you know, their brothers, their family. So it's a pretty special episode in that right, too. Cry every time. I do cry every yeah, time. Every time. So... Joni's told us one of hers. Dan, what's one of your favorites? Yeah, that wasn't mine. That was his. Yeah, that, that was... Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that was on my top two. Told me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's, let's oh. rephrase this. Okay, I asked Joni to throw one out there, and she threw out there a seat on the edge. So we're trying to get a top ten. Someone else throw a top ten out there. Dan, say oh. words. My goodness. Um, well, I'll throw out, since Joni, she volleyed mine, I'll throw hers up there, is This Side of Paradise. Shut your mouth, Zach. You shut it. Don't you even start. <laughs> well, because all of us want an ice cold Georgia style mint julep. Okay. And a prize. Now, How this, could you not hold laugh? on. This is the one where the flowers are the villains and they yes. make Spock have feelings. It's the spores. And it's the one time, and you have to watch all the episodes, the one time that you've been waiting for. It's like they gave the audience what they've been waiting for, to see Spock as a human. Yeah, no. This was not on my list. Not on mine either. <laughs> I don't, not I don't on care. mine either. <laughs> it's my favorite episode. It will always be my favorite episode. I'm going to write it down on the side, as in like, we'll talk about this. <laughs> We'll talk about this after the other 15 episodes we bring about and really talk about, is this in the top 10? Many good ones, though. Many good ones. Many good so ones that are better one, than this one. This is one of my favorite episodes because it, it deals with so many different topics. There's a lot of character development. Uh, Journey to Battle. Ooh. Yes, it's, Spock's it's, parents. Yeah, Spock's parents show up. You've got a lot of diplomatic intrigue, so you actually see sort of how the Federation works and its worst elements. Uh, you also like, like that was the first episode for me that Spock became a person, if that makes sense, yeah, because no, he had an awful, like his dad was not a great guy to him at least. Damn Sarek. And, uh, you can't really blame that he's not a great guy. I mean, they're Vulcans are cold they're emotionless. So it's, and, and like, his mother, for me, absolutely steals the episode every single time. Every single time. Because you're wondering, like, why are you married to this guy? <laughs> like, what do, you, what do you see in him? Why are you with him? And then you have the intrigue of diplomats are dying. And everyone on the, on the ship is, is a suspect. I love He's that He's a political guy, isn't he? Yeah, it's... <laughs> It is a very dynamic episode, and it also, it's kind of like City on the Edge of Forever. It's something that you see the the repercussions throughout the Trek franchise, especially in, like, in Sarek, um, Next Gen, of course, uh, in Unification. Uh, yeah. You can definitely see a lot of those tones transfer on uh, to further Treks. It is a very dynamic episode. It's not personally one of my favorites. Good episode. Um, but, yeah, you can continue more on it. It's, it is a good episode. Very dynamic. It has a lot of different elements to it. So. That Andorian was no Andorian. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
That was a fake antenna. We didn't buy that for a second. I love that episode. I'm not gonna lie. Mainly because of Spock's parents and that just that that, that dynamic relationship. Whatever, mm-hmm. Mr. Political Guy, you can talk about all the assassins and the all that stuff going on in the background. But no, Spock's parents, that dynamic, that's what sells it for me. And it's on my list also. Is it on everyone else's list? No. No. What? <laughs> really? It's wow. fair, right? It's all fair. right, that, that's fair. Okay, two to two. It's, gonna, it's, turn. it's my turn. This is going to come down to have to be like three of us are going to have to vote for it to get on the list. But here's right. mine. A mock time. The, hey, uh, that's season, not mine. The season two opener. Do you not, Trevor? You give me the look. You don't know what a mock, a mock time is. Mock time is a great episode. Spock and Pon Far. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Spock goes crazy because he's built up with sexual frustration. <laughs> that would be your favorite, Zach. <laughs> oh my! I'm not goodness. sure if that was an insult or a joke, but I'll take it. So oh. anyway. <laughs> Just Zach last year, about this time. <laughs> hey, you shut your mouth hole. Anyway, so, oh good times. Uh, I hate you, but I love you. Instead of seven years, it's one year. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, anyway, Spock goes crazy. You finally, this is the episode that I've been craving for. You see the real emotion on him. These are real, true emotions, not flower emotions. And... Oh, you. Yep. The, the, <laughs> the, the debut of the hand and the phrase, live long and prosper... To really give some actual background and depth to the Vulcan her- heritage and the Vulcan customs and yes, culture. Yes, exactly. I love the culture that you, you kind of get immersed in his culture. It's, it's definitely a Spock episode. But the yeah. highlight of all of it is Kirk versus Spock. Not just the terrible fight scenes, because they're terribly great fight scenes for the 1960s. <laughs> but really that dynamic where he thinks that he has killed his captain. And that's what transcends him out of that zone. Where he can go back to being Spock because the emotional depth he's gone through has gotten him through it. And then the emotional outburst afterwards when he finds out he's alive, real true happiness where he exclaims Jim and a smile on his face. Oh, that is a good part. Oh, I, I where he is no longer able to contain that emotion. And, you know, kudos to them for actually, because, you know, you're wondering, you're watching season one, you're wondering how, why in the heck is this race around? Because they obviously do have feelings. Why do they suppress them? I don't understand the logic behind this. And then you see why they do it. You see their culture, and it makes perfect sense why they would create this. It was to protect themselves from themselves. So, yeah, no, I'm, I, I support this. Everyone agree, a mock time. Yeah, yeah now me and Joni were both talking about a mock time, just based on, the again, the depth of going into a character that was really a mystery for an entire season. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, it's just like, boom, here you go. Uh, So definitely one of my top ten episodes. All right, let's pass it over to Joni. Throw one out there. I really, I call this the Sweaty Sulu episode. (laughs) I already know where you're going, and I love it. it. Is it? That is Mirror Mirror with a fence. No. Oh. Oh. Naked time. Naked time. Naked time. Shirtless Sweaty Sulu. Uh, (laughs) It's the best. Oh my gosh. I wish they showed more of him freaking out without a shirt on. The naked time. Favorite. Oh man, I he love that. He's a pirate. <laughs> uh, everybody just being completely out of their element. I think it would be really fun to actually be on set with them to watch them doing this. I just I think it's fun that they all get out of character and kind of get goofy. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. it was while this is not on my top 10, I think it's pretty brave of a show to have something that early in the first season, have kind of an outlandish, cut-loose episode where everyone's going to almost play in a counterpart to themselves or a, you know, a counter-character. Um, it's pretty cool because that was like, what, third or fourth episode they I had. Think it was the one. second or third. That's second, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, like I said, it was pretty brave of them with a new show to have something that going off where you hadn't even developed the characters and you're going to throw new elements to the characters. Pretty cool. Yeah. That's that's how you develop. That's where, if you really want to like pop it off, you put you. That's how you develop your characters. You put them in the situation where they're not prepared for, where they don't know what they're doing, and that really epitomizes Star Trek in a lot of ways. Because mm-hmm. like you're in the unknown. No one knows what they're doing. Mm-hmm. They're making it up as they go along. So the question is: Are we voting at top ten, or is this good but not top ten? Dan, voting. It- it's not in my top ten. I do love this episode. Not Trevor, 
It's not in my top ten. It's not mine either. It's a great one, Joni, but yeah. you get no, <laughs> it, it is honorable mention mention mm-hmm. for Naked Time. Just for every, Sulu. Everyone loves the Naked Time. Yeah. Yeah. Dan, throw something out there. Dan the man, uh, second uh, most famous person at the Star Trek convention. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is probably going to be on your um, dishonorable mention oh my list, gosh. but I'm going to throw it out there anyways because I like uh, if you like sitting through 37 <laughs> minutes of boring with uh, 10 minutes of amazing then, and a Rubik's cube, then Corbamite Maneuver is your episode. Yeah. Yes. Corbamite Maneuver. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it is kind of a it is a drag out episode where you're kind of just waiting. I mean, the whole episode is pretty much set on the bridge. It is incredibly drawn out, and then but then the last you know ten minutes it's of the episode the is so impactful. So I mean, it it really affects your view on society, how you should conduct yourself. It's just a great ending to an episode. Don't judge a book by its cover for sure. Yeah. And it, it again, I, I have a big theme, obviously, of, of throughout, reverberating throughout Star Trek, uh, Star Trek is it's one of the, the first episodes where you see uh, an alien race testing the Federation. Um, and that's just, it, it's really cool that we pass that test as a generation, you know? This is on mine, sheerly for the ridiculousness of the reveal in the last five minutes. Yes. Then so, we will have the Tranya. Yeah. The Tranya. <laughs> Yeah. Like just that reveal, it's a little baby dude who like <laughs> grew up to be an ugly famous actor. I can't remember which one what his name is, but Clint Howard. There Clint. we go. Yeah. <sighs> so uh if <laughs> only you could see his jo- tight lips. <laughs> Joni, are you are you in favor of Corbinite? Speechless. Just no. Just no written all over his face. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, God. Uh, thank you. Uh, Coramite River. Woo! It's, it's just so ridiculous. It's it's that perfect 60s weird, awesome Star Trek weirdness. But that, it, Zach's right. It is the epitome of 1966 sci-fi. And if you're going to watch your first episode of Star Trek... Why not make it that one? Do not make it that one if you are trying to get your friends to like it. The first one I saw was City on the Edge of Forever in seventh grade. Uh, see, that's a, that, that, that is a good one. People would like Star Trek after watching that one. But uh, or might, oh, man, I, I showed it to my friend, and and I, I we just got bored. I was like, oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. It's so long because <laughs> I forgot how long it was. It's probably the same 48, 49 minutes as the rest of the episode. Yeah. So just... But the last 10 minutes was just like... My mind. Like, it's a, it's a baby. How did this happen? <laughs> it's a baby. I, then I'm we will have the Tranya. Because it's, I'm just going to move on from this. All right, so the point <laughs> is, we know we have one for no. I'm saying yes. Dan says yes. Joni, yes or no? Oh, gosh. You said yes, no. You must pretty... watch it. No, not to new people. <laughs> so that's I'm, a yes. That's a yes. Number three, no. Corbinite. <laughs> Corbinite. Oh gosh. Maneuver. Like every time I watch it, all I can think of is is that awful scene from Total Recall where it's Quaid. Get to the reactor. Quaid. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I see. Yeah, it's great. I know. Oh, it's not. It's the exact opposite of great. It, hey, hey, look, okay? Sometimes you watch a movie like Snakes on a Plane and it's so bad it's awesome. This one's kind of along the lines where it's just so weird and crazy that you just can't it's help so but love it. But I've it's never iconic. It's an iconic, iconic episode. Iconic. It's not great. I and, and. Equilibrium all the time. Joni, it's, do you remember what won the uh, Star Trek convention costume contest last year? No, please. Jeff, shout out to you because that is the coolest costume I've ever seen. It was, I can't think of it. What's the character's name? Balok. Balok, yes. yes. Tanya. Tanya. Okay. Oh, it was epic. So epic. That costume. All right. Moving on. Dan, what? throw something out there, please. Uh, he, he did the Corbin. That was mine. Oh, okay. Yeah, Trevor. Sure. Mine. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Thank you. A part of me will never forgive you, Stan. Can you top that, Trevor? <laughs> Come on, T-Rev. So, one of my favorites is The Enemy Within. 
when Kirk gets split up into, into evil Kirk and good Kirk? <laughs> Silence. <laughs> I'm laughing at you. Do you remember the scene where they're laying side by side on the table and how bad it was? <laughs> so like my favorite part is like evil Kirk, like his eyebrows somehow are different and he's like Oh And they had better lighting on his face yeah, yeah. It's it's really just the makeup, like they make him try to look almost Asian with the amount yeah. of makeup they put on him. Right? <laughs> And, and so, like, okay, so obviously it's probably because it's from the 60s that limits their options for how to make a different Kirk. It's on yeah, the budget, make okay? Kirk into almost a Klingon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what they do. But the concept, the idea of the dual nature of people, I really like. I, I really thoroughly enjoy it. If he doesn't like this side of paradise, shame on you, sir. <laughs> yeah, shame, shame on you, Trevor. Like, okay. I like this episode only for like the sheer incredible terribleness of William Shatner's acting. Like it's <laughs> it's the great overacting. Like some, this is like some of his best stuff. Is besides Star Trek, the motion picture, V'ger, we are the creator. It's it's right <laughs> up there with that. But I can't say that this is the top ten <laughs> episodes. Yeah. I could understand how a psychologist could like the duality of the episode, but for me, it's not in the top ten. <laughs> it's fun. Well, all right, what was the name of the title again? I can't remember. <laughs> the Enemy Within. Enemy Within, all right. Oh. We're throwing out some good ones, but we're like, oh, man. All right, moving on. I'm going to throw one out there. And I'm going to have to try and pick a good one here. All right, I got one. I got one. Once again, I'm going to go across with Dan here. We're going to go for sheer weirdness. Because this one is the trouble with the tribbles. Yes! I love yes! that. So. It's so great. It's so cute, obscure, yeah. weird. That, like, the Klingons are in it. And there's a a, a a Klingon in disguise who's a normal person. And then all of a sudden, tribbles are going everywhere. And it's like baby Wookiees everywhere. And... Baby. It's just so weird and obscure and fun. And Scotty a, punches a guy out because he calls the Enterprise a garbage truck. A garbage nope. cow. Garbage yeah. cow, I'm sorry. Yeah, and I that that is such that is the epitome of the fun of Star Trek. Mm -hmm. The trouble with dribbles. Sure. Like it's it really does. I've had conversations with people about this being the best episode to introduce the original series Absolutely. because of the humor. It, yeah. Everybody can find it funny. It's so good. They do a follow-up episode in DS9. That's one of the few DS9 episodes I've seen. Yep, yeah. Trials and Tribulations. Yeah, where they go back in time and they, like, re-edit. Like, and where, like, you see DS9 crew members in the yeah. background doing stuff. So and good. As the hands of a surgeon. The hands of a surgeon. <laughs> I so, love that. It's so fun, and it's funny, and it's a little bit theatrical, too. Um, and I just, I, I like the bar fight scene. I like when Scotty's getting in trouble. <laughs> nope. Who threw the first comment, Scotty? Well, I did, so we can take a few insults. <laughs> yeah. Now, the, the, the conversation between Kirk and Scotty um, and insulting him and how that wasn't enough to throw him over the edge, it's a great little little scene that they have. Yeah, love it. Wonderful. So I, uh, I, got I, th to I think this one's universal. Trouble with yeah. tribbles. I think, I think we wore Trevor down already. Trevor looks. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> All right. I, I, I'm still like I, I'm. I'm still like the Corbinite remover still hurts. <laughs> but what I like too is that you get to know who Chekhov is a little bit. You know his little temper because you don't get to know him very well. And everything was invented by the Russians. Everything. <laughs> everything. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's just a fun episode. Overall, great episode. Yeah, yeah. just the right amount of campiness. It was a really good episode. Great Weird, for anybody. Fun. Great. All right, Joni, give me another one. Ooh, um, let's see here. Now you mentioned this earlier. I'm going to go with Mirror Mirror. With what? Mirror, mirror. 
Mirror, mirror. It's where. Uh, it's mirror. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Alternate universe. Yeah. Alternate universe. Yeah. No, that one's great. Love that it. One, that was actually on my list. On mine too. Yeah. I think this one's everyone's list because it's it, so it good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I definitely enjoy watching that episode. Uh, uh, special shout out to Kirk's eyeliner. <laughs> I love it. No, it's it's just a really good episode. Again, it's kind of kind of like the Naked Time. It it mm -hmm. uh, it allowed all the the actors to have a really chance to do something different, fun. I can imagine. He's a villain. Well, and they really got. You could tell the actors really got in the characters on that episode. It's just such a great episode. Uh, just the dynamic between the, you know, all the different characters on the show. Which is funny because this is one of the episodes we were talking about yesterday. Uh, me and Kyle, one of our other podcast co-hosts. We're talking about yesterday was the main difference between TOS and some of the later series was TOS constantly went to let's look at other versions of Earth or other versions of the world and everything yeah. out there was almost like like they would show up in the episode Miri with the kids who never age and yeah. it's, it looks like the Earth and then they just go down there and they don't do anything with it or they show up and it's 1920 Chicago or they go over there and there's the Nazis taking over and it's always yeah. like some version of Earth out there. And this, for some reason, this is this is reminding me of it. That where the later series constantly went out and truly explored the galaxy. Yeah, yes, they did. Yeah. That was their mission for sure. I liked that. So I think we are all in agreements with Mirror Mirror, and this is the episode I thought you were talking about with uh, Sulu being sweaty. He does sweaty. get sweaty this one as well. Yeah. He does get sweaty because he you know He's tries to assassinate him. Captain Kirk, and he tries to also shit. get with Uhura. He just glows. <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> All right, Dan. Yeah, it, that one is on my top ten. Yeah, I think it's on everyone's. All right, Danny, Dan the man. Oh, is it Joni up? Oh, that was Mirror Mirror. Oh, okay. Um, well, I'm gonna go with one that was kind of we were just touching on is uh, Patterns of Force, uh, which is kind of that you know again just different versions of Earth like you were just talking about. Patterns uh, of Force. Remind me which one this one is. So that one is where they are observing a early culture. So they're a sub-warp culture. Um, and they're they're basically mimicked after Nazi Germany. Oh, Germany. that one. Okay. Yeah. I just yeah. didn't remember the name of the title. Huh? Didn't they say I, that? I just didn't remember the name of the title. Oh, yeah. Patterns of Force. Um, yeah, it's just it. I, I think it's kind of a cool episode, uh, especially the time frame. And it. You know, it, it's kind of, I think the title really goes well with the patterns of force. It's kind of a, we have patterns of violence. Um, and and to see a, basically a civilization take off because of radio transmissions of Nazi Germany, uh, it kind of shows how influenced uh, cultures, people can be by the simplest of things. So uh, I really enjoy that episode. Um, I think Spock and Kirk do a great job in that episode. It's, it's really a fun episode, but very serious topic. I don't remember yeah. it. Well, it's yeah. good. Uh, I wouldn't say it's my top ten, Trevor. It wasn't in my top ten, but I'm not going to necessarily oppose it being in the top ten because it's a good episode. Joni, I don't remember it as well. It's been a long while since I've watched that episode, so I, I have no comment so far. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's another one I'm going to put off to the side for us to discuss later. Okay. Uh, yeah. Due to we'll see if we get any other ones that we all yeah, agree like on. So I'm, somebody says something that, yes, that needs to be on. Yeah. So Patterns of Force, and I'll say we got two votes for it. Uh, Trevor, is it your turn? Yes, and it is the Doomsday Machine. Yes! Zach likes that. <laughs> Love that episode. It's wonderful. Because you got a crazy, like, you got a crazy captain who's, like, totally lost it. Commodore. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Commodore. Oh. Yeah. Uh, you've got, like... You, and you've got this just, it's dealing with the idea of mutually assured destruction. That's what the entire episode is about. Uh, just this idea of you build a super weapon, if you use it, we'll all die. So it's crazy to build it in the first place. It's a metaphor for nuclear armament, which was not exactly a big deal in the 1960s or anything. Yeah. It's not, it's not like Cold War was going on. Uh, but no the, the show, the, it's funny to me that the show inadvertently undermines the entire message of mutually assured destruction because they're saved by a thermonuclear like explosion 
by like sending the other ship into the doom state of ice and blowing. But they do call that out in the episode. They do, which once again, why it deserves to be in the top 10, in my opinion, because it's actually dealing with the complexities of the nuclear age. I'm for this one. Travers for this one, Dan and or Joni. I'll agree with that one. That definitely, yeah. I mean, it applied to something that was happening during that time. And I think th those are important episodes. Um, without actually offending people and kind of shoving it down your throat, it was still giving you a different perspective. Yeah, and the other thing, too, is I, I agree with this. This is a, a top ten episode for me. Uh, because not only does it, it deal with the big scale of you know nuclear warfare, but also just the intimate uh, friendships within that thing. Uh, during during this time that we had in the 60s, it really goes into, you may have had friends, people who were really close, who had different viewpoints on things. Um, and it, it does touch on the relationships that they have during the episode, which I really like. So just as a recap for everyone, what we've got so far right now that's on the top 10, we got six. We got City on the Edge of Forever, A Mock Time, Corbinite Maneuver, Trouble with Tribbles, Mirror, Mirror, and Doomsday Machine. We got several others we're going to come back to if we don't fill up 10 before then. Which I've only got two that I really want to fight for. The rest, I'm like, meh. All right. So if we don't have anything else to say about Doomsday Machine and how wonderful it is, which I just want to say that that, cat, that Commodore, he's one of my favorite crazies. <laughs> Great. All right. T-Rev, throw something out there. No, it's your turn now. Is it my turn? You, okay. Mine was the doomsday machine. I'm, I'm always one person behind. Um, all right. I was, that was actually what I was going to throw out there. Doomsday. Let's see. Nice. Oh, oh, oh I don't know. Oh, there's so many good ones left. Okay. All right. So, Space Seed. Yeah. Oh, one. Space so Seed. It's Khan. Like, it's the precursor to Wrath of Khan. You can't miss it. It's, it's so amazing. Like required literature, you have to. It's a must see. Like, I mean, when Wrath of Khan was being written, the director, the writer of that movie went, okay, I want to use something from the original series. So he went and watched every episode of TOS and he said, man, that Khan character. Which that is was funny. Great. Let's explore that more. It's just like almost 20 years before that movie came out there. They left it open. I don't even know if they meant to leave it open on purpose. I don't think they did either. But when he put it down there, Kirk literally says, it would be interesting to come back one day and see how it's done. Yeah. Well, it, it didn't do well, Kirk. Because nope. <laughs> Kirk didn't check on that. Captain City Kirk, Alpha 5. Admiral Kirk didn't check on our progress. On City Alpha 5, which they Jesus. thought was City Alpha 6. This is City Alpha 5! Oh, which is also great, because Chekhov is not in that episode, but, you know. Khan's like, I never forget a face. Well, he wasn't in that episode, bro, just saying. <laughs> Mention the continuity errors within Star Trek. Uh, uh, there's too many. Anyway, so Spacey, so amazing. Wonderful villain. He's probably my, one of my favorite, absolute favorite, even just in that episode, favorite villains. He's kind of uh, Q of the original series. He's, yes. he's really just kind of a returning character that you just, you love to hate and you hate to love. <laughs> yeah. Mm, so great. And then the way he, like, mind warps the woman to betray, like, the entire Enterprise. Because <sighs> he's a cult leader. That's what, like, that's what Khan is at the end of the day. He's a cult leader, only he's five times stronger than a human being and three times as smart. So, are you familiar with Milton? <laughs> well that's one of the last things he says i thought it was funny anyway oh. so if we all agree space seed is absolutely amazing yep it's a must see you have to see it in order to continue <laughs> that's that's three dan are you affirming no I'm, I'm good with space seed i do when i watch space seed i do kind of wonder how it goes from space seed to wrath of khan because in space seed uh khan is almost like a lovable antagonist it's almost someone you admire. And then in Wrath of Khan, he is really maniacal and, and villainous. Uh, so I... If you I are just, interested in knowing about that, uh, I will have a review up Monday about the Wrath of Khan. <laughs> and it is highly focused on the parallel themes of it in Charles Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities. And there's an entire section devoted to Khan's living imprisonment and how he never left the planet. So if that's not a plug, I don't know what is. But at the time of this publication, 
on the internet. It will be online, so go check it out. Go read it. So, yes, uh, it is definitely on my top ten, Space Seed. Mm. All right, number seven, Space Seed. I, if I'm finally caught up to whose turn it is, I think it's Joni's. Oh, goodness, it is, isn't it? Hmm, this one's a hard one. Um, you, you guys probably, probably may not, uh, agree with this one, but I think it's important to say for, uh, female watchers, uh, women watchers should watch Mud's Women. Um, it, it's got an amazing message in there for women. I know you guys are dudes, but for women to watch this, and I know it's hard to watch this, ladies, sometimes you're just not into this weird sci-fi stuff, but... It's worth it if you watch Mud's Women. Shut up, I can see it. <laughs> but it's got a good message, right, Dan? Come on, back again. Okay, here. so I am going to say, in Joni's defense, Harry Mudd is one of the most lovable characters that ever came out of Star Trek. I, I love his character. Two, it is a fantastic mes message about your happiness is really controlled ultimately by you. It's, it's uh -huh. don't let other people affect your own feelings, your own thoughts, your own self-image is really, it's really dynamic as far as that. And I, I always talk about how you're the one who controls your happiness. Don't let what someone said about you or, you know, what someone did you make you unhappy. It's a great, yeah. great message. You need to believe in you to like you. And that, that's how this episode speaks to me, especially women these days with the body positivity and stuff. It's like, Love you for you because he gave him gave her the um uh, what's it the the Venus yeah the the, the Venus, Venus drug. drug that's it the Venus drug and they just gave her like a sugar pill it was like a gelatin pill yeah. or something and she's like what do you what do you mean this isn't real and she just thought she was ugly and she thought that only this pill could make her beautiful when really she's been beautiful the whole time yeah and I was I was actually discussing this on another podcast I won't plug them here. Um, but basically, kind of, it's. I'm going to go, I don't want to go too deep into it, but kind of the Star Wars versus Star Trek and how Star Wars is very black and white and Star Trek is very shades of gray. And I love that they could bring a villain that is not really, it's a lovable antagonist, um, someone who's not really a villain. And, and you can learn a lesson and see that this person is not necessarily a bad person. They're just, they've kind of dove into the wrong line of things. And I like that. I, I think that's one of the things you can you can see in Star Trek is that you have lovable antagonists. You have people that aren't necessarily villains, but get villainized like flowers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that's, I do like this episode. So see, what's funny is that I love hearing both of you talk about this episode a thousand times more than I love watching this episode. <laughs> Cause every, every time I watch TOS, there are two episodes I skip and they're both mud and it's just, oh. That is sad. He's such a great like, character. Maybe okay. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, and I need to go back and watch it because I've never yeah. thought about anything y'all have just said. Okay, I've never thought about that. I've never heard that. I might need to go back and watch it. But from what I remember, these are like my least favorite episodes up there with Plato's stepchildren. Like these are like my three dishonorable mentions. At the Star Trek convention in Las Vegas, you are mud. <laughs> Whoa. Hold on. Hello. You got beautiful women around you, and you're funny and lovable. Hey. Okay. He's got a point. My but sex doesn't, doesn't strike me as being super incompetent. Mud's not super incompetent. He's like, actually really quite smart, and he knows how to manipulate things, and he's he's gone through life and had successes in life. Now, Kirk, strategy. Uh, Kirk, you know, thwarts so many different people's plans, but... Mud was really someone who was going in life, manipulating the system, and really just kind of a someone who little white lies helped him get to the places. He wasn't an incompetent imbecile. He really had a plan, and he he really knew how. He almost took over the entire enterprise after he got his ship blown up. I mean, he was he was a pretty cool character. All right, so we got two votes, absolutely for Mud's women. You know where I'm standing, Trevor. Where are you at? Okay, so I I do enjoy I do enjoy the mud episodes because he is that wacky kind of character and I'm not going to say it's worthy. Okay, if we are I need a clarification here. 
is the is this a top ten list of if you got if you only have ten episodes of Star Trek to watch, these are the ten you need to watch, or are these the ten best? Ooh, that those are two different lists too. That's so that's two that's different that's lists. So depending on that question, if I'm asking for the best, no, I'm not putting it on this list. If I'm asking for the top ten, though, I can ab I can absolutely understand that because. It is one of the few episodes that deals with, like, feminine anything. That it's nor the show itself is a male centric show because the majority of the cast is, mm -hmm. and so, you know, it, it was it is important for science fiction to sort of embrace that and to really dive into it and look into it. So, so I I view a lot of episodes like if I want to. If I want somebody to get into Star Trek, it's because I want it to change their life, okay? I, I want people to watch Star Trek because I know it can shape people's lives. And just like if I was going to, if someone was going on a date and I was going to give them advice. You would not make fun advice, of Obama. Yeah, well, that would, be, that. that would be number one. Number two <laughs> would be be yourself. I think it's great advice, right? You know, just be yourself. Don't act like someone else. Don't try and be someone else. Just be yourself. And this episode directly hits on that. So if you know, like you said, if Don't I'm talking what other people expect of you, be you. If I'm talking top 10 episodes mm -hmm. for someone to watch and the reason I want them to watch it is to change their life. Yes, it is on my top 10. Is it the most amazing dynamic? Is it space seed? No. It's not the most entertaining episode, but it is a very impactful it's a good episode. Yeah, it's a good message to it. So yeah, so Zach, what is exact? What are you going to label this? Like, I I want to change my answer and say this is a top ten best, even though we've gone against that earlier, just so I can defeat Mud's women. But for continuity's sake, we have said this is the top ten must see. Okay, so I'm yeah, I see it. <laughs> I'm, voting, I'm voting Mud's women then. Woo! Go Trevor. Bye. 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 Uh, with great regret in my heart, I write number eight, Mud's Women. <laughs> As you know, I felt about the Corbinite maneuver. Like, yeah. just, just utterly being defeated, Mud's Women. Zach. Okay. Zach, you, you must see Mud's Women. All right, I have them all on my computer. I'll watch it on the flight tomorrow or the next day, whichever day I'm flying out. I forget. Tuesday. Dan, I believe it's your turn. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh -oh. There are two spots oh. left. For yep. certainty, oh, we've I've already got eight, and that was Mud's Women. And I okay, this this one's pretty easy for me. I probably could have said it earlier. Uh, it's Balance of Terror. Yes, you took, you took my only one that I was going to fight for. Oh man! So um, I'm okay. I'm very okay with you. This. Fight for it. Ba Balance of Terror, and I, I look at things from a real like psychological aspect. This is a psychologist dream episode, I think. Um, it's just a great episode. Mark Leonard's performance is fantastic in it. Um, as the Romulan commander, it's do you just mean a, Sarek it, as a Romulan? Yes, yeah, Sarek is a Romulan. Okay. Yep. Um, they just changed his outfit. So uh, I just I love the dynamic of it. I I love just it's just a good episode. I, I don't have much to say. You it's, guys can say more. It's wonderful. It's awesome. I'll, I'll, it's perfect. I'll pass this over to Trev since this is his his baby child. Okay, I'm not gonna say it's my baby child, but I noticed a theme for a lot of the episodes I was looking at. And I really wanted to fight for, and that was they're dealing with the Romulans because they are such an amazing, I find them such a fascinating race. And this is the first time you deal with the Romulans, mm -hmm. like at all, period. And so you get the dynamic of one, they're evil Vulcans. They are the bad Vulcans of the universe. This is what happens if Vulcan decided to be bad guys. Emotions unleashed Vulcans. Yeah. Emotions, I mean, yeah. So, Screw you, we are, and two, it's dealing with the concepts of imperialism. It's dealing with the concepts of militarization. And when it, that directly butts up against democracy and, the, you know, the liberal Western blah, blah, blah. And it's, gosh, it is the episode where they really, it's one of the big episodes where uh, they really dive into the Cold War and all of that. So, for me, this is when Trek gets political. This is one of the first episodes that comes to mind, and I, I mean, agree. I love it for that reason. And it does it. 
it does it better than almost any other episode I can think of off the top of my head. It, it shows you Romulan honor and kind of their culture, just like a, a tiny tidbit into their culture too. And I, I actually really like that. It's, it, it shows, it gives you a little bit of insight into their culture and, and you can understand why they do what they do, even mm-hmm. though I don't like Romulans, but you watch that episode and you're like, Hey, I can understand that. Yeah. And, and that's another thing you can, you can understand why somebody does something and still be like, I'm still going to fight you <laughs> right. to death mm-hmm. to stop you. But I get it. I get it. I get I understand you. I understand your point, but it's bad. But hey. <laughs> <laughs> Which there's only two things I want to add about this, the wonderfulness of the episode. One of them is the mistrust of Spock and the uh, almost McCarthyism in the episode, yep. which is as soon as they realize that the Romulans look like Vulcans, there is instantly everyone almost but Kirk yeah. is starting to mistrust Spock and the McCarthyism of it. And it's, I just love that aspect. The other one is the begrudging respect between uh, not Sarek. What's his name again? <laughs> not Sarek. Mark Leonard, the actor. Yeah. Anyway, so not Sarek Romulan and Captain Kirk. Yeah, I, don't, I don't believe he has a name in the episode. I think oh, okay. his title is the Romulan, Romulan Commander. Yeah. Well, the Romulan Commander, and especially towards the end, that almost like he's met his, his, immov- like the immovable force has met the or the the unstoppable force has met the immovable object. Thank you for correcting me on that. Oh, no? like those two forces are so perfectly matched to be against each other, and then when they finally collide, and you see the Romulan commanders just begrudging respect of I wish I could battle him one more time. Well, and, yeah. and Romulans in the entire franchise have a superiority complex. Mm -hmm. They feel like they are better than every other race. And to see this commander look at at Kirk as an equal, it's a really cool moment, so. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think both those things, everything y'all said earlier, those are the only two things I thought that need to be said that are just absolutely great about this episode. Love it. So it sounds like this is like a moment of 100% unity. Unity. Number nine, balance of terror. (laughs) We have one open spot left, and I have at least two I want to argue. And it's your turn, so throw uh, I believe it was your turn, but... No, Balance of Terror was the last one I was going to fight for. Everything right. else, I'm just like, man. Nah. It was a shared one. <laughs> I, I have two that I want to argue, but if we're going for top ten must-see, must not see. top ten best, yep. I'm going to throw out one instead of the other, and that's Arena against the you Gorn. Know, I- Thinking about this as we were discussing, must see because it is yeah. a classic. It's terrible, but it is it's a lot terrible. Maneuver. It's terribly it's so awesome. Exciting. It's the greatest worst fight scene ever. There are literally gifs just for this. That is the worst fight scene ever against the Gorn. But the Gorn is so iconic. You must see it. And I. <laughs> I wish we were video recording all of us doing terrible action scenes, but like the the double so, ear slap, it's so bad. It's the so double bad. axe handle, and then he Ugh. he makes it's a gun not. out of a, a bamboo, bamboo cannon, and it's it's just great. It's so great. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's great. It's wonderful. It's a corny, corny episode, and it kind of shows you their budget and, but and, it's awesome though. I don't know. It's classic Trek. Oh, that's that's a hard one though. I think that I think we need to discuss this last one. I yeah, feel let's like discuss the other one. The other one that I was gonna suggest. Mm-hmm. Devil in the dark. Ew! The meatball. No, no, the meatball. The meatball. The meatball. That is, uh, that is definitely a uh, no meatball. A that's bad a, episode. That's, that's a, that's dish a wonderful back. episode. That's so <laughs> much better than Paradise. Oh, I'm going to punch you, and I will explain it at the convention. <laughs> it's so much better. It's so great. I love so, it. As far as Devil in the Dark, well, let me read back up. Arena's terrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Arena? No, 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 no. Arena is wonderfully terrible. Wonderfully nope, terrible. Nope, nope. Just terrible. <laughs> it's fantastically terrible. Listeners, take my advice. Bad. Uh, Bad. It's drink some rum with it, and it's perfect. So Devil in the Dark does have my favorite mm. scene, yeah. probably in all of the original series, which is the last little scene where, where Kirk and Bones and Spock are talking on the Enterprise about how the Horda had impeccable taste and mm-hmm. liked Spock's ears. And then they said, oh, no how reason. human of you. And he said, 
there's no reason why I should stand here and be insulted for <laughs> calling apart human. It's, it's just a great scene. That little that scene. Is but Devil in the Dark is such a bad episode, too. I love that episode, but obviously I'm getting shut down here. Devil in the Dark, that's the one where, like, it's Jack the Ripper, right? No. Oh, it's the it's one with like the like giant meatball. meatball. It's a slug. Oh. It's a slug that's, like, digging holes and... The energy. Oh yeah, using. yeah, 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 yeah! I remember that. Yeah, no, that's a weird episode. No, my, yeah, no, it's, no. It's I'm bad. obviously getting shot. One all marble eggs everywhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now I remember. No, yeah, no. All right. Well, I got shut okay. down like Johnny. I have to say one more thing about Devil in the Dark is there is the point where Bones goes, and he's he's got hands covered in in mud because he used ceramic like Golly. cement to cure this beast, and he goes. Golly, I believe I could cure a rainy day. <laughs> and it's just a great scene. I'm just a southern doctor. Yeah, he just spackled uh, a piece of glass. So, um, yeah, bad episode. All <laughs> right. Well, I got but, shut down hard on Devil in the Dark, but Arena's great is what we're saying. Well, nope. I mean, okay, so you go to a convention, you always see that mask. That Gordon will be there. Do you want to have to explain it to everybody who's like, who's that guy? Is that, is, what's that, Godzilla? No, it's not. Like, you, you, you don't want to explain that, right? It's an iconic thing. Just like Green Orion Slate. Like, yeah, it is. It really is. It's, it is one of the most, if not the most, iconic Star Trek episode of all time. I think it sets the bar for terrible fight scenes in Star Trek. <laughs> and there's a lot of them. And I like to be on a top ten must-see. Like, you have to understand the Gorn who it is. Yeah, like, okay, you cannot, if, because this is, the, I am, once again, I want to reiterate this. This is the top ten Star Trek episodes you have to see. Yes, because I lost on Mud's Women because of that. This is yeah. the ones you have to yeah. see. This is yeah. not the best episodes. Because like, Arena's not the best. It's just, you it's have not. to see it for how incredibly terrible that fight scene is. That's the only reason it's why. So bad. It's Beyond, so bad. Like, it's awesome. I'm not even going to say that. It's just, it's be, not because it was so bad, but because for some reason that fight scene is part of the cultural, it, it's part of the cultural icon of Star Trek. Yeah. It, like yeah. the Kirk fighting the Gorn. If you ask somebody who is not a Star Trek fan, they will have seen that scene or at least part of it. And so to not put it on the list, even if it's not good, especially because it's not good, <laughs> <laughs> but what else what else is it does anybody else have anything yeah. on their list that because uh, arena could get knocked off if, if you it's you two yeah. it's up to you two now well i mean i've got two more on here that are good Jeez. uh i had a list of 13 i'm sorry <laughs> I we had a couple. We I got i'm i'm good i i said all mine mm -hmm. um, like uh one of them is the enterprise incident with the uh female Romulan commander that falls in love with Spock and mm -hmm. they think Spock's crazy. Yep, all that hand stuff that you're doing that no one can see. Um, <laughs> it's almost a Boy Scout salute. <laughs> it's a Cub Scout, so that's two fingers. Uh, yeah. oh, oh, it is? Cub Scouts is two fingers. Uh, I was a brownie once. Yep, yep. Ooh. All right, so nobody Enterprise incident, no? No. Court no, I, Martial, a, where they... I, it's uh, a fun episode, but I don't... Yeah, yeah. Court Marshal, where oh, Court Marshal? Oh, with uh, with Ca when Captain Pike comes back? No, that's no, that's that's sure. a menagerie. Court Marshal right, is right. where they think that Captain Kirk has killed someone by committing an act of uh, ejection under a yellow alert. Yeah, when he did it on a red alert, and the guy is secretly still on the ship, but they're holding um, Captain Kirk at Court Marshal. By the way, also nominee for worst fight scene in Star Trek would be. <laughs> In that episode at the end. Well, yeah, but not as bad as Arena. Well, that's pretty bad because there's two people fighting terribly. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. No, the episode with Jack the Ripper, that's the worst one. Oh, no, it's it's like second or third worst. I don't know. Uh, Court Martial's a good episode. Definitely does not make my my top ten must-see. Yeah. Uh, that's why these last two... If, if you can say one thing about Court Martial, it's very next-gen-like. It's, yeah. you know... It's a very next gen like episode. Um, good episode doesn't make my top ten must see, but definitely a good episode. Uh, now I like I like the empath a lot. I thought it was a cool, different episode with Jem, and it's um, 
she she's different. She can't she can't speak, but they they find ways to communicate with other beings. And, and you know, instead of being rash about things, they slow things down and they actually try to figure stuff out. I don't know. It's kind of a cool episode. It's I don't know if it's you know. I, I yeah. definitely wouldn't say top ten must see, yeah. but I like the empath because, like Joni said. It does slow things down. It's one of the few episodes where it's not like everything's running full bore. Everyone's kind of going like, wait, let's figure this out. Um, Bones, Spock, Kirk, really cool episode. You know, you can see Bones caring as a doctor for people and how much he would almost sacrifice himself to save a patient. Um, it's a good episode, definitely. I, I, do, I wouldn't have it make my top ten, but good episode. I do appreciate it's... Really, it's display of humanity, mm -hmm. of the teaching someone, really, I mean, these aliens almost feel that it's, they're unable to harm people and they just don't care, and it's teaching them about empathy. Well, mm -hmm. it's kind of, you know, the title hey. of the whole thing. Yeah, but yeah. it's, I, I still wouldn't say it's the top ten, but I, I, I enjoy it. All right, anything else that is more iconic and more must-see worthy than the arena that anybody has on their list? Spock's brain! Dis oh, hold on. Dishonorable mention. <laughs> yeah, hold on. I got, I got one that might. Okay. Okay. Plato's stepchildren. No. Because, no. No. Because the first on screen interracial kiss. No. The world. No. That changed the world. I don't care what you say. I, oh. I appreciate the show's history for this moment. But I hate that episode. I hate it too, but... I hate that episode. That, okay, if we're going with top ten moments in Star Trek history, I can agree with you on that one. Top ten moments for that one moment at the end of the episode. But I hate that episode thoroughly. God, I hate it too. It's so terrible. So I'll, I'll say this. It's not a must-see. It's not that great of an episode. But it's a must-learn about. Yeah, I the guess. history of it. Top ten moments. We could debate that one. Yeah, I think everybody should okay. know. Thank God. Historical... Kiss. Historical yes. because it's like, it is the first interracial kiss mm -hmm. on television ever, uh, and nothing can really being a slap in the face to society. Yeah, that's what I like about it. Is it was making a difference without slapping you in the face with a difference. It was very it subtle. Was it, it was, and it was because they were being controlled by two people, and they didn't want to make each other uncomfortable, but they had they were being forced to do it. Yet. I mean, because you're, as a viewer, even if you were racist at the time, as a viewer, you'd be like, oh, well, they're forced to do it. So it's not like they're slapping me in the face and, and you know, trying to hurt me. But now, but now it's normal. Now it's, now it's part of television. It's, it's part of life. Accept it. I, it, it's just an iconic one too. It's one of those things that you, you at least need to be educated about. Star Trek did change the world. Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> I actually got a little sick to my stomach that that might actually be on a list. That I actually <laughs> that episode. But so like, it's so we're, bad. It's so bad. No. We're agreeing here. Historical significance. It would put it on a top ten moments list. Like, in but not a top ten episodes. If I was making a top ten list of episodes of any shows that ever existed, mm -hmm. it actually would be on that list. Yeah. But we're not. <laughs> 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 So unless anyone's got something else, Arena is going on this list. Yeah. Oh, gee. Yeah. Arena. Arena. Oh. Oh. We never came back to this side of paradise. Okay, let me explain it, too, before you step. It's my favorite episode. Okay. Now, you Well, Arena to... is my favorite episode. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ooh, there is really. no arguing that this side of paradise is a much better episode as a whole than Arena. <laughs> I, but it's, is it as iconic? To, I don't. It's hard because I watched I watched it four times this month. It's my favorite episode. I, I can watch it every day. But, but just because it's your favorite doesn't make you know, it as iconic. It is to a Star Trek fan because when you you do have to kind of pre-watch a couple Star Trek episodes to understand who Spock is and who Bones is. And Bones is very professional, you know, treat ladies like ladies. And then Spock's very. I have no emotion. I have no love for you. All I can give you is education, blah, blah, blah. 
But watching this episode, it's another one of those dynamic characters where Spock is hanging upside down in a tree telling Spock no. Telling Kirk, telling <laughs> but, Kirk. Or telling Kirk no. But if we're going to go by showing Spock having an emotional outburst, I think all that is better accomplished in a mock time where it's a more natural outburst of emotion that he can't control. But at the end of the episode, what does he say? It's the first time that I was happy. I it, like I, I do I tear up during that episode. I'm not gonna lie. I love that episode. Um, not as much as Joni. As but, a true uh, Spock fan, it's if Spock's your favorite character, it's a I, must see. I think it, it has great touches on on complacency and yeah, just it's a good, good episode. There's and so you many can, fun catchphrases. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> kind of like Trouble with Tribbles. It's very comedic. It has a lot of great funny parts. It has a good moral backing. It has a good lesson learned. Uh, it has lots of emotion. It's a tearjerker. It's a good episode. You laugh, you cry, and you don't watch the goat. <laughs> watch the goat! <laughs> Trevor, I, I'm seeing your facial expression here. Okay. Now, here's the deal. Okay, earlier, two of us voted for Side of Paradise. You two, me and Trevor voted against. Yeah. On Arena, we had three votes. Me, Trevor, and Joni. And unfortunately, Dan just can't see the light. I don't see how Joni could vote no, I wouldn't, show I wouldn't win that. No. Nope. Yeah, because like this. this yeah. would, it would totally beat that. Because here's the ones that we wrote off to the side that we all talked about. Side of Paradise got two votes. And I only put it to the side if it, if it got less than three. Side of Paradise, two votes. Journey to Babel, two votes. Naked Time got shut down with one. That was you, Joni. Anyone within, Trevor, got shut down with one. Mine, Devil in the Dark, shut down with one. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, really, it, it comes down to I, Arena, Side of Paradise, and Journey to Babel. Which, obviously, I would like... Okay, because we're talking about must-see, I'm still going to stick with Arena for, the, for no other reason other than the Gorn fight. But you... And if we're going for... Like shows, I, I I always will enjoy Tower or Journey to Battle more than most episodes, but that's just because it's me. But they make a strong argument, Zach. <laughs> like it's a real, it, because it it's one of the few moments that that Spock has emotions, and those are those are really iconic and really important. So. It just makes me smile, like truly smile when I watch that episode. It like warms my heart to hear him. I don't think I want to tell you when he asks, where are you? And it's just him being. I won't lie. Persistent. The last line is great. It was the first time I was happy. Doesn't that make you cry? Just Man, I mean, not cry, but like I do swell up with warm emotions of joy and you know it's so sad though and sadness and she she even says she's like she's like why why that was for my good why did you do this to me because she was truly happy even yeah. though it wasn't a necessarily real happiness she's like why did you do this to me you say it's for my good well and when he says that when he says for the first time i was happy the great part about that is he's talking about losing his happiness but he's clearly showing his half human emotions and being sad without the spores. So not only did he show emotions with the spores, he clearly shows emotion in the show without the spores. He is truly sad. And that fight scene between him and Kirk, that was not crappy. That was a good fight scene. <laughs> yeah, it was. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. it like I'm not, I'm not particularly happy about it either, Zach. But they like won. they argue it so well. Like I know Arena yeah, is like, terrible. I know it's terrible, but it's just that fight scene. It's so terrible. All right, all right. So here's what's gonna happen. Okay, like they get it. Like I, I can't, I can't not tell them they're wrong. I can't do it. So. All right. So here is how. This is the final list. Here we go. Top ten must see Star Trek episodes. Yeah. Number one, City on the Edge of Forever. Mm -hmm. Number two, This Side of Paradise. <laughs> Number three, A Mock Time. Number four, The Corbomite Maneuver. <laughs> Five, Trouble with Tribbles. Six, Mirror Mirror. Seven, Doomsday Machine. Eight, Space Seed. Nine, Mud's Women. 9.5, Arena. <laughs> and 10, Bounce of Terror. Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? 
And that's not an empty really chair. wants arena in there. <laughs> really wants I do have to say that of this list, we did have that kind of talk about which list is this best of all time or must see. I believe that about seven of these fit on both lists. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. I think so it's good. We're, we're, okay, it's, that's that's the list we got tonight. Yeah, I like it. It's, it's a good list. It's it a is. wonderful ten and a half episodes that you need to watch because you just <laughs> you just need to watch that half of the fight scene between him and the Gorn. Okay, fine. Yeah, it's a, it's that, a half. half. And then the the last half of uh, which one's that one? The 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 Rubik's cube. Oh, yeah, it the made, it no, I know, so, but just watch the last half. So, Golden Knight Maneuver, like, just watch half of a mock, of a Arena where they're fighting, and then mm-hmm. just watch the, the baby reveal in Corbin Knight Maneuver, and that's one episode. So, we got ten. Yeah. Yeah. Trenya! Trenya! All right, thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. This has been the top ten must-see Star Trek original series episodes. If you don't know why I keep stressing that, it's because we got a follow-up coming soon in a couple days. It's the top 10 Star Trek Next Generation must-see episodes. So join us here in a couple days. Thank you once again to our wonderful friends, Joni Brosis and Dan the Man. Thanks for having us, Zach. It's, it's been a, a great pleasure. It's been a joy. And Trevor, my little co-host. You rock. The dog to my Will Smith and I Am Legend. Oh, why'd he die? The dog was a girl. <laughs> oh. There's a lot of problems with it. You might as well have just called me Goose from, from Top Gun. That fits, too. There we go. <laughs> do, I, do I need to put on the aviator so you can call me Maverick? I'm just saying. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight. It's been a blast. This has been the State of the Nerd Union. You can find us on nerdunion.us or Facebook at a Nerd Union. Joni, where can they find you at? Uh, anything at Joni Brosis, Facebook.com slash Joni Brosis. You'll find me there. Hashtag Joe Bro. Joe Bro. Yep. All right. Thank you all for joining us. Later. <laughs>